It's now time for the Billy C Show. Part of the BillyCBoxing.com network. And we're coming to you live from the Billy C. Studios in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Caligero, and it's time for the Billy C. Show. Good day, good morning, good evening. Whenever you're watching, whenever you're listening, I hope you're doing okay today. Today's show uh, is being brought to us in part by my book, Tom Molino, From Bondage to Baddest Men on the Planet, is available right now where all good books are sold. You can get a copy of it right now while you're watching or listening to this very show. Just visit Amazon.com and uh, search for my name or Molino, Tom Molino. Today's show is also being brought to us in part by BillyCBoxing.com. Uh, check it out for all the latest uh, boxing news that's relevant because... Uh, we remove it once it's uh, outdated, so uh, check it out. And uh, today's show is also being brought to us in part by uh, the New York State uh, Boxing Hall of Fame Banquet. And uh, I, I, I got to just say this. I'm honored to be part of this year's 2024, 2024 uh, New York State Boxing Hall of Fame class. It was an honor, uh, and uh, I, I, I just want to thank all of you guys, especially over the last 21 years. I mean, yes, you know, I did uh, boxing promotion and management, and we owned a gym and all this stuff, but uh, the majority of it uh, was, uh, I believe, was due to uh, this show and you guys. So I, I want to thank you, and I would love to have you uh, join me in the celebration uh, at this uh, uh, banquet. It will be taking place on Sunday, uh, September uh, 15th. Um, it's a pretty decent deal, man. It's a seven-course and an open bar from the time you're there. Uh, it starts uh, uh, 1230 and goes till 530 uh, in the afternoon at one of the nicest restaurants, uh, Russo's on the Bay in Howard Beach, New York. Uh, listen, for all information or if you want to put an ad or anything else, uh, give uh, Jack Hirsch a call. His number is 516-790-7592. That's 516-790-7592. Make sure you tell him Billy C sent you. And if you prefer, you could drop him an email. His email is A-J Hirsch, H-I-R-S-C-H, the number five at AOL.com. I want to see you all there. Because I'm looking forward to it. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, everybody. And uh, there's a lot of people that were, have been part of this show uh, over the years that uh, I, I'm going to thank uh, at the banquet. And I hope, uh, I hope everybody can be there. And, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, one of my main men uh, that was on the show for a while, Dave uh, Wilcox, he's in the chat room right now. So if you're watching or listening live, uh, come on in and uh, join the chat room. Uh, we will be talking uh, about uh, the Tyson Fury and Auslandia uh, Usyk fight. It's uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship title, uh, the unified one. And, uh, you know, I I'm looking forward to the fight. I've been on the fence with this fight, boys and girls. Uh, I really have. I've been on the fence. I've been going back and forth. But I finally have my pick, and I'll be breaking it down and giving you my thoughts uh, in a little bit. So, uh, uh, I want to thank, uh, Dave, uh, on the congratulations, but I tell you what, uh, Dave, uh, you, uh, you made it, uh, happen to my man, uh, uh, helping me with the show and, and getting us guests and just being Dave, -ma because, uh, we had a lot of fun during, uh, that era and, uh, we're hoping that, uh, it can come back. All right. Well, listen, we're going to get into, uh, some fight results right now. Uh, one that I wanted to talk about, uh, Monster, Naoe Inoue, uh, improved to 27 and over 24 knockouts uh, when he uh, stopped uh, Louis Neary uh, at one minute and 22 seconds of the sixth round. Um, it was uh, early, early in the morning, but I guess it was like on a Saturday night in Tokyo. But we got to watch it Sunday morning at like four in the morning. Um, 
The monster went down. He hit the hit the canvas in the first round and then came back to win. Um, it was an exciting fight. If you like a uh, uh, back and forth uh, nonstop action, uh, that was a fight for you. And I, I saw somewhere yesterday uh, about uh, what anyway said, um, and there's actually a photo of it. Um, he uh, went back to his corner. And now normally, you know, if you get knocked out, if you've ever been, uh, uh, your bell has ever been rung or, or you've been knocked out, you, a lot of times fighters don't even remember that uh, for those couple of seconds, and it's understandably why. Um, but I had uh, saw somewhere that he went back to his corner and, you know, with all the technology and the big screens and stuff, that he went up and he looked at the replay as he's in his corner being attended to. He looked at the replay on the big screen and he saw something. He saw something and uh, went back and, uh, well, the rest is history. He knocked him out. Um, another fight that I watched that I absolutely enjoyed uh, was uh, uh, Vasily Lomachenko's return to the ring, and it was a su successful one. He improved to 18-3 and three with 13 knockouts uh, when he stopped George Cambosos uh, in the 11th round, 2 minutes and 49 seconds uh, of the 11th round. Um, listen, I've always said that Vasily Lomachenko is the definition of the sweet science. This is the guy, and, and Timothy Bradley was saying it during the broadcast. I mean, you know, this guy's right in front of you. He's right in front of you. As a matter of fact, he's so close to you that he's beating the hell out of you, all right? He's, he's, he's within arm's reach, and you're trying like hell to hit him, and you just can't. And the reason is because of his footwork. He's got a, an, an ability to pivot and, and all of a sudden be in another spot. I mean, Manny Pacquiao, pe people used to say, oh, Manny Pacquiao, you know, one minute he's there, next minute he's gone. But in all due respect to Manny Pacquiao, Pacquiao did not have the footwork that Lomachenko has. Lomachenko, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch as a fan. I couldn't imagine being in the ring with a guy like Vasily Lomachenko um, and, uh, uh, and try to hit this guy when he's on. And he clearly was on Saturday night. Um, and uh, congrats to him. You know, I, I, I'm going to get into uh, something here in a second. But uh, let me just, I, I wanted to run down, uh, speaking of Dave, I wanted to run down some heavyweight action of note. Okay, let's, let's, let's try to follow the heavyweight division, right? It's like a bouncing ball. Um, first of all, on the undercard of the lomachenko Cambosos fight, uh, Hemi Iho got a first round stoppage over Lucas Brown. Yep, that Lucas Brown to improve to 22 and one with 17 knockouts. Uh, Brown dropped to uh, 31 and six. All six of his losses came by knockout, and he had lost his last three fights in a row. Two days after this fight, he retired, uh, which I think was a good move. Joseph Goodall scored a 10th round stoppage over uh, Faggy uh, Opulu. Uh, to improve to uh, 11, 2, and 1. I probably, I probably just murdered that first guy's name, but uh, whatever, I, I apologize for that. Um, and uh, OPI drops to uh, 16, 5, and 2. Six foot seven, Morad Alive improved to 11, and 0 with eight knockouts uh, when he took care of Dillian uh, Prazovic uh, in uh, the very first, uh, actually he dropped him twice um, in the second round, twice in the third round. And uh, that was uh, the end of it at 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Jose uh, Larduet improved to 13-0 and 0 with 11 knockouts when he scored a fourth-round stoppage over Luis Jose Martin, who dropped to 15-6. and six. And from Carter Wales, Huey, not baby Huey, Huey Fury improved to 28-3, the cousin of the guy we're going to be talking about in a little bit, uh, Tyson Fury scored a second round stoppage over Patrick Corte, who dropped to 21 and four. The official time was two minutes and six seconds uh, of, uh, of that fight. Uh, joining me right now is my man, uh, Alex Papali. And uh, Alex, how you doing today, brother? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, Billy C. You hear me? Yeah, I hear. You. I, I was oh, just gonna nice say. I was just gonna say. Hey, you, I can hear you today. It's working. Hey, hey, I wanted to. I wanted to bring you in uh, right now, real quick, because I want to talk a little before we get into 
uh, Usyk and and uh, Tyson Fury. I wanted to talk a little about the Lomachenko fight. I was extremely impressed by him in the fight. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, uh, comments on social media. Uh, he's not the same, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And true, I mean, he's definitely older, and he did have some time off. But, I, you know, I, I, I really valued what he said. He said leading up to the fight, you know, he admitted that he's getting older. Uh, he, he admitted that he was going to have to really see how his body healed from uh, this fight. He underwent uh, some surgery. He underwent uh, fighting a war, some war that they're having over there in his home country, Ukraine. Um, and, you know, he had been out of the ring for a while. He certainly looked good Saturday night. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think he looks really good. And I really think that, um, you know, the lightweight division um, would be very well served if we get to see, uh, you know, if Gervonta Davis or when Gervonta Davis uh, beats Frank Martin. Um, right, get, right. <laughs> get to see Davis versus Lomachenko because um, that would be a super fight. Um, I kind of, as much as I love Lomachenko, I kind of lean towards towards Davis just because he's bigger and stronger and younger uh, and faster. Um, but because uh, Lomachenko, uh, as amazing as he is, he does – he's small. He's just smaller than these guys. He's more of a natural featherweight. Yeah. There's and, no doubt um, about that. So, yeah, he has to work to get these guys. That's part of what's so impressive. That's something I liked about um, – uh Sergio Martinez is that he was more of a junior middleweight but uh Walter weight almost um you know he was more like a 150 pounder and he was fighting 160 pounders and more and um there's something about that that it's like being a giant killer you know it's like a Jack Dylan type guy uh who's fighting these guys who are just naturally bigger than him and he could beat them um so uh I'll certainly be rooting for Lomachenko, just like I'm going to be rooting for uh, my man Alexander Usyk this weekend. But uh, it's going to be tough, uh, which makes it, um, you know, one of those fights that we got to see. And plus, they're they're like one and two in the lightweight division now. Well, uh, the the one yeah. thing I, I will say is, um, you know, you're you're 100 right. I mean, Lomachenko looked like he was two weight classes smaller than Cambosios uh, on Saturday night. And, you know, I know I know Tank is is one of the names that are being tossed around. But, you know, when you look at his options, OK, um, and, you know, I, I, I said this last week and I'll say it again. You know, if Lomachenko was looking to put a, 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 a nice stamp on his career and call it a day, this was a good fight to do that with. You know, he looked fantastic. He walked away with a belt, and I don't think he's got anything left to prove. However, the one thing that Lomachenko has been missing throughout his career was the money. The guy never made the money that he should. A huge so, payday. Yeah. Right, he needs a huge payday. And, and I think that there's a two-fight and possibly three-fight uh, trail to some huge money for 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 Lomachenko. The first one would be a potential showdown with the winner of this weekend's uh, fight uh, between uh, who's uh, um, Navarrete, right, and uh, okay, Baranchek and Bar- Baranchek, right. Now you know there's a belt on the line for that. A, a uh, I believe it's the WBO uh, vacant title. I think Lomachenko fares well against either one of those guys, right? So so just hear me out. If he gets past that, now he's got two belts. And he could actually step in and fight Shakur Stevenson, who I think could be a better matchup for him than Tank Davis. And the reason why I think, now everybody loves Stevenson and he's so skilled and everything else. He has a tendency to lull you to sleep, and he doesn't have a mean. I don't think he's got a mean streak. Lomachenko has a mean streak. Terence Crawford has a mean streak. Tank Davis has a mean streak. Oh yeah, you know, and and Tank's got some power. Shakur, I'm not so sure, you know. So I, I me personally, I'd like that matchup. Not so sure. Yeah, not Shakur. so sure, Shakur. <laughs> uh, but I think I think that that would be a good matchup. But I will say this: it does appear 
that Lomachenko, with guys that have boxing ability and hand speed, seemingly give him a little bit of trouble. I think I yeah I, I can see what you mean. I think well, and also the length of Shakur Stevenson as well as the skill um, and the speed. I think that it would definitely be a more dull fight. I think, uh, and that's Lomachenko. in Lomachenko's favor. I think because okay. he could, he could he could get the action going, and, and not that he runs to the other side of the ring, but I, I just think he, he's so hard to catch up to, Alex. He's there, yeah. and then he's gone. Yeah, and I think these guys take a lot more. These are like tougher eggs to crack, so you got to beat out him more, especially with his – he doesn't have huge punching power, so it's more of attrition. Even those incredible body shots, it takes a while, you know. Um, it didn't take him that long. He didn't even throw that many, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they stopped. He didn't throw that many. Well, what was it? Like, it was the 10th round, 11th round or something. 11, like the 11th round. 11th, yeah. So, I mean, because he's always been a guy who starts slow. Um, uh, when he's he, had trouble, he has started he, slow. Yeah, he didn't really start that. And that's what I mean. With Combosis, we definitely saw a much more. He was more like he got into gear quicker. And I think he kind of had to because he needed to rap on this guy a while before he broke him down. Um, and I do think that um, with Shakur Stevenson, because of the, you know, I I would like to see Lomachenko fight Gervonta Davis more. I think that's a much more entertaining fight. Um, yeah, but if, you're, he, but, but if you're Lomachenko's manager... Is that a fight you want? You're, you're thinking as a fan. I think, well, I think as financially, I think it's a better fight too. I think Javante Davis brings more money because he's much more appealing. You know what I think? Fights, you know, you know what I think? Fights can be kind of dull. You know what I think Javante Davis needs to do? Go spend a few bucks and go to English class with you, Alex, because he, did you ever hear him talk? I mean, it's sad to listen to him. He makes, he makes Floyd Mayweather sound like a, a scholar. You know, I, well, you know, it's um, one other thing. You said that, what was that? Dick Tracy uh, villain mumbles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, who was that? Dustin Hoffman? In That's in the movie. Movie. Yeah, but, movie. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. Mumbles. Um, so CompuBox. All right. I don't. Alexander Papali you got on your on your I, I, yeah I put it in there I got to support you know I uh, it's, it's, Alexander is like the Ukrainian version of um, Alex. Alexander is it yeah, yeah. well Ale so, yeah. Alexander Olex yeah yeah, yeah. um so <laughs> once again once again Joe T Tess as uh, Timothy Bradley calls him uh, the Tess yeah. man um you know was was uh, ripped a page out of Jim Lampley's book. And was calling that fight based on the CompuBox stats, what were happening. That drives me insane, Alex, because I don't know if, if everyone understands this, but there's two guys ringside, each have a laptop, and they are punching in the data for these punch stats. Now, you know as well as I do, boxing is subjective. The judges are subjective. The scorecards are subjective. You know, I mean, the stats, you know, the only stats that aren't subjective are knockout stats. And you could even argue that a referee stopped it too soon, but it's a, it's a cut and dry uh, stat. Like in baseball, you know, you're up 10 times, you get five hits, you're batting 500. Football, you know, you're a running back, you run 10 times, you gain 100 yards, you average 10 yards a carry. It's, it's fact. Boxing's not like that. Yet a lot of these commentators refer to the comp CompuBox, then they're throwing up all the historical CompuBox stats. Like, it's like, you know, it, it just, I don't mind it at all as a conversation piece after the fight. But during the fight, to suggest who won the round because somebody's punching in a, a, a landed shot, and quite honestly, there were a couple times when he said, oh, so-and-so didn't land uh, that many shots, and I'm saying, well, well, I don't know. I thought he landed more than one shot in that round, you know? So w what's your thoughts on, on CompuBox being used as a tool during the fight? I, I, I agree with you. I remember 
when HBO first started using it, um, I remember Larry Merchant, they would let, um, you know, back when Barry Tompkins was the guy, the guy instead of Jim Lampley, they'd go to Larry to, you know, in the before the fight and he would break down and he would go, go over the numbers and he would say, um, here's the CompuBox numbers. Remember, these give us a qualitative not a quantitative, I mean, a quantitative, not a qualitative look at the fight, at these two fighters. And that's very important. Um, so whenever it's quantitative, and I think now it's very different because now, and especially the, this weekend, almost always they are being, the CompuBox guys are watching it on TV. They are not ringside. Um, sometimes they are, but very often they are not ringside. They probably weren't in Australia. Yeah, that's what I mean. They very likely were not in Australia. Um, so I, you know what? I don't mean to, I, Alex. Upset. I don't. I don't mean to cut you off, but I think the only guy that was ringside was Bernardo Suna. Yeah, I think so for ESPN. Yeah, you know. Um, and you saw. I don't know. I just saw this morning that um, Joe Tessitore and social media made that guy the ring announcer who got the. Um, uh, the um, bottle, uh, the f the fight decision on the uh, supporting bout there. Their names completely just slipped my mind. Um, the female fight, uh, he got the decision wrong. They forced him into retirement. He I, I saw that um, because he couldn't handle because Des Testor was like you know unduly. Yeah, the guy definitely screwed up tremendously. But, he was too busy uh, yelling. Did you hear? It? Did you hear? Oh him yeah, doing it, was, it was outrageous. But, you know, I think one of the guy, the guy, you know, it's another good example of um, just turn it off. Social media, you know what? You know how do you fight social media? Don't go on it. Well, I've always yeah. said, I've always said they can't cancel me. I'll, I'll, I'll cancel myself. Uh, fast cancel than my Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. I do think the thing with punch stat, one thing that I think that they would do, re do themselves a tremendous service if they said, hey, you know what? We, we've we gone over our own records and you should take our numbers plus or minus this many punches. Because we, I'm sure they have checked their own work and said, you know what? Sometimes we do, we did miss a few. They've never admitted that. Uh, and I find that a little annoying because it's like they are perpetuating this idea that they are gospel truth. Yep. Yep. Um, and that is not the case. And remember, these things have even been read out loud in front of our Congress. Remember, uh, I think it was the Tim Bradley, um, Manny Pacquiao decision. John McCain went on the floor of the Senate and like was holding the CompuBox numbers. Saying this is an outrage. Give me a break. The, the only, the, the only. Thing I love about our sport is I, I absolutely love boxing. I've been watching it since I've been 15 years old. When there's not a knockout, it's subjective. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It is just like figure skating, and in a way, you could say, well, yeah, but it's more corrupt than figure skating. Yeah, we've never had anybody take a crowbar to anybody's knee. Um, That's a 10. I just held up a 10. You couldn't see it. I, you said figure skates. Here's my score, 10. So, so but, I tell you, that's the thing about it. And I was just talking to a, a cousin of mine who, you know, we were talking about movies. And, you know, this idea of like, well, do you take critics' takes seriously? And no. I, I mean, it's the same thing. I love a sport where if it comes down to a decision, you have three observers who yes, they are. They've watched a lot of fights, but even their opinion is subjective to some degree. Now that doesn't mean they're always wrong. No, you're always going to have people who disagree. Listen, the um, only way I, I've 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 thought of this a million times, and I think you and I have even talked about this. I know uh, Dax and I have. Um, the the only way to make a punch stat a stat in my opinion, would be to do it after the fight where they could actually take the video and go frame by frame. Did that punch yeah. land? Did that punch not land? You know, and, and do it like that. I understand they can't do that during a live uh, fight. But but my point is, is that it's the announcer's fault 
that they keep talking about it as it's it's as if it's a live statistic, and it, it drives me crazy. But yeah, uh, I mean, I think it should. It's certainly because there's not a lot of stats in this sport. So it's certainly something that's an interesting conversation piece, and it's something that is worth talking about, but it is not uh, worth making it sound as if it is the absolute truth. And I think a lot of times they don't talk about it sufficiently. For example, in the um, the Canelo Munguia fight, uh, if you look at those punch stats, they kept going on about how many punches Canelo landed. Yeah. But look how many more Munguia threw. So you are seeing that this guy brought, drove the action. And that's one of the things about Canelo is that he was very efficient and economical in the amount that he landed. The percentage he landed was much higher. And it shows the style of fight. It, it gives you like this numer numerical view of the fight that is interesting. But they don't even point it out. They just will, they, they take one aspect of it and just drill that home again and again. And it's like, you know, you have all those numbers in front of you. Be a little more judicious in how you talk about them uh, instead of make, harping on it as if this is, the, this is what's happening. And if you don't see this, you're an idiot. Right. Well, that's, that's, what, they, that's what they try uh, to do. And, and the other realistic part of the statistics of how many punches are thrown and all of that. You know, you could, you could, you and I could be fighting, and you could throw a hundred uh, punches at me and land ninety-eight, and I only throw two punches, but one of them knocked your ass out. Who, who, what, what does it matter? You know, right? Um, yeah. But so that, uh, that's why it's it's a quantitative look, not qualitative. Um, you know, and because if you're just tapping, tapping, tapping with jab, 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 but the other guy is driving in, you know. That's another great, thing. Great hands, That's you know, another so thing. The, one of the things that turned me off about a punch stat years ago was, um, I, I forget the fight, but a guy, one of the guys came out and he throws his first punch was a stiff jab and knocked his opponent out. One punch knocks his opponent out and punch stat says no power punches would land with no power <laughs> right, punches right. it was a jab you know okay yeah it was a jab but it obviously uh, obviously it had a power it knocked the guy out hey listen yeah. let's let's just get some other news so we can break this down we're already getting uh, uh some thoughts on the uh tyson fury and and Usyk fight um one thing i want to say did you catch how much they're selling tickets for for the tyson jake paul fight no. The lowest price ticket is 575 bucks. Wow. If you want a ringside seat, $8,067. out of here. No, no. It was, I, I saw this. This was sent to me. Um, not, this was not on, you know, uh, social media or it wasn't on uh, any of the fight websites. This was sent to me uh, by... Uh, a uh, advertiser for selling tickets, obviously. Wow, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, that, that is. Yeah, that is. see, I mean, it, it really, it it has become this, I mean, I think that's always been the case because I can remember, you know, like Delahoya Mosley, those like ringside seats were like 1200 bucks. And you Yeah, know, but that's Delahoya Mosley. Right. You know, yeah. that's not I mean, Tyson is, and, you know. But this is a big spectacle. And because, you know, anytime you have a spectacle of a fight, it's going to be big prices. Mike and Tyson Mike Tyson couldn't even muster up a mean look at the press conference the other day. Yeah. You know, I, you know it's going to be weird. I, I, I don't know. To me, I'm very excited about the Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano rematch. I'm curious about the Tyson, uh, Jake Paul. Of course, I'm going to be rooting for Mike to take him out oh, in one round. So is everybody. But um, we'll be we'll, we'll be and, talking. And I am a little concerned that you know that I wonder what kind of drug testing they're doing. They're because, doing none. Have you seen yeah, Jake Paul? I mean, Jake Paul is probably juicing like crazy. Oh, you you think he's got muscles yeah. on his forehead? You That's know, they, I, I, I heard that he he's gotten his upper body now is ridiculous. Yeah, no, so, no. See, that's a little troubling because Mike's an old man. Yeah. No, we we uh, we're gonna talk plenty about that as it comes. I just want to uh, touch on t two other things real quick. 
Um, in a fight that I loved, and it was a uh, all British heavyweight fight, Fabio Wardley, Frazier Clark. They're still trying to uh, get the rematch. If any of you all out there missed it, punch it up. It was a great fight, and that's what I love about the UK boxing scene. Uh, they have young fighters fighting each other, and uh, I hope uh, I hope that fight uh, gets uh, signed soon. Marco Captain Crun, I mean Huck, uh, is returning to the ring. I- I'm a little surprised about that. Um, as a heavyweight, uh, I guess uh, at the end of June, he's uh, doing uh, getting back into the ring for that. So See, I've well, always been, been more partial to Captain Crunch myself. Yeah, yeah, well, me too. The only problem with Captain Crunch is it used to destroy the roof of my mouth, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. all right, all right, first things first, let's talk a little about the uh, uh, fight this week. Uh, we already had somebody in the chat room. Nav is predicting uh, Tyson Fury by TKO. A uh, couple of notes. Uh, the camps, uh, they got into the first round uh, at the hotel yeah. the other day. Uh, and John Fury uh, headbutted somebody. <laughs> that guy's a nut. You know, I, I've never met I've never met him. We, we've had Tyson on this show a few times, but I've never met his father. I've saw him in interviews and stuff. And he's, he seems like a real loose cannon. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's not good. It's it's not professional. Yeah, no, it's not, not, <laughs> you know, but they, they started with the typical uh, British, you know, chanting, you know how they're always singing and chanting and stuff. Well, they started that at each other with the two teams and then it ended up with the headbutt. But a couple of quotes, uh, Tyson Fury says, I predict that some, and this was a classic statement by Tyson Fury, Uh, In case you guys don't realize this, uh, well, here's what he predicted. That somebody's O is going to go. Yeah, yeah, we know that since they're both undefeated. Uh, He says, uh, and it's going to be the team over there pointing to him, uh, pointing to the uh, opposite team, I should say. Uh, Usyk's a great fighter, Olympic gold medalist, cruiserweight world champion, heavyweight world champion. But unfortunately for him, he's come against the great Tyson Fury in the era of me. I'm really, he's such a modest guy. I'm really looking forward to Saturday night. Even if he had 20 million people screaming his name, they can't fight for him on fight night. And when there's two men in the ring, uh, it's going to, on the night, it's going to be a very daunting when the Undertaker uh, is in the ring with him. Uh, obviously, he's referring to himself. Uh, he also said, I'm on top of the world, baby. Who wouldn't be enjoying it? I'm in the great kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is the main event because he's not allowed in the U.S. Um, It's the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. We're looking forward to putting on a fantastic show for the world to watch. Yusik, he said, I feel good. I'm happy to be here. Saturday is a special day because I will have the opportunity to become undisputed for a second time. It's great. It's very good for me. It's very important for my country. I like that. I have a plan. It's a better plan, and it's a great plan. I feel good. Each event uh, brings a new experience. It's always wonderful. It's great. New experience. I don't have a final message. I'll save it for Saturday. You know, yeah, I, I like one of his quotes was uh, they're like, what, you know, at the rivals, he's like, uh, I go now to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no. Um, all right. So, so, uh, um, well, oh, coach is uh, saying that USEC is uh, protesting the canvas. I did not hear that. Uh, Papa mm-hmm. is saying John Fury's a loser. Uh, he's trying to steal the spotlight. Okay. Um, anyway, what's your thoughts on the fight, man? Break it down. Let me know what your thoughts are. I think this is a very tough fight to call. Um, I agree. I agree. I think you got to go just pure, pure skill. It's all USEC. However, the gap in size is enormous. And it's so big that, and just the experience of being a lifelong heavyweight, uh, being in there with bigger men your whole life. Um, well, there's a joke in there somewhere. Um, the, uh, um, that goes to Tyson Fury, of course. Uh, I'm leaning, of course. Uh, I, I I like Usyk. I think Usyk is just he's he's fought everybody, and he fights. He goes and beats guys in their backyard as a cruiserweight. He was unbelievable, and I think as a heavyweight, he's been impressive. I always thought 
Joshua, well, for a while, I thought Joshua was the more talented guy. Of course, things didn't shake out that way. Um, well, hold that thought because that's a big thing in my in, in my prediction of this fight, that fight. And yeah, but, I, I think he he he's shown he can beat a bigger, stronger man. However, Joshua doesn't fight big and strong the way Tyson Fury does. Tyson Fury he has an amazing chin, we know. I don't I don't I don't agree with that. You don't think he has a great chin? Well, well, no, he gets he up. Acid bomb. No, he get, he I, what I meant by that is he's been down quite a bit. You know, he yeah. doesn't stay down. Right. So I give him that credit, but I mean, you know, I, I'll bring it up in a, in a in a little while, but Steve USS Cunningham dropped him. Right, you can you know? put him down, but you—it's hard to put him out. Yeah, well, that's that—that that was evident with the uh, Deontay Wilder fight. Hey, I just before it goes off the screen, we got uh, Errol H L is predicting Usyk winning by stoppage, maybe even uh, knock Fury out cold. I, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. I think I, I would love to see an emphatic victory uh, by whoever is going to win. I, I'm rooting for Usyk. I, I think Tyson Fury. As much as I enjoyed him for a while, Tyson Fury really, um, I, he kind of burnt me out with the Ungano. Uh, he didn't take that seriously, and I thought that was embarrassing. He embarrassed boxing that night by not taking that seriously and not just flattening that guy. Hey, I don't know if you're in the uh, chat room, but uh, Lovett says this isn't boxing related. But Alex, you look very sexy at this weight. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> All um, right, I, let me let me break down some some stats here, and then before we give our actual predictions, okay? So you take a look at Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is uh, 35 years old, two years younger than Usyk. He's 34 and 0 with a draw. 24 of his knockouts, uh, 24 of his wins coming by knockout. He's got a 70 and a half uh, knockout ratio. Uh, he's fought 230 rounds uh, of his 35 fights. Uh, happens to be 53 rounds more than Usyk as a pro. Um, his last five fights, his weight has been between 265 and 278 pounds which is going to be something that we, we need to take a look at as well. He's uh, six foot nine, six inches taller. I didn't realize it was that much taller than Usyk until I had it on paper. And he's also going to enjoy a seven inch uh, reach advantage with an 85 cent, uh, 80, 85 cent, 85 inch reach. Um, he's a WBC world champion. But here's an interesting thing. The computer ranks him at number three in the world. Anthony Joshua is number two, okay? Now, I think Anthony Joshua, if the same... I'll just go off topic for a second. If the same Anthony Joshua that fought Nagano, even though Nagano's not a, a boxer, but that mental state that uh, Anthony Joshua's in, I think he knocks out Tyson Fury. I, I, that's, and, and we're going to see that fight. But according to uh, Team Fury, it's going to be after the rematch so of this fight. Uh, so when I, when I look at all 35 fights his biggest wins were really the three fights against wilder yeah. you know uh and, and i say the biggest wins even though the first fight was a draw in 2018 and then well, and uh, also i mean he did beat vlad klitschko okay wait hold on in a, I, in a terrible 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 fight you gotta let me finish i i'm, I'm ready to I'm, I'm ready to put vlad in there as a, a oh, okay, you know okay. i'm his biggest fights his biggest wins were the three fights against wilder even though the first one was drawn in 2018. He got the seventh round stoppage in 2020, and he got the 11th round stoppage in 21. In 2015, he won the 12 round decision of Vladimir Klitschko, which I give him credit for. And the only other fight, as I searched through 35 professional fights of Tyson Fury's that maybe he should get a little credit for, was the Dillian White stoppage in 2022, a six round stoppage. Other than that, I mean, you know, he beat names like uh, uh, Steve U.S.'s Cunningham, but Cunningham, you know, he went from light heavyweight to cruiserweight to heavyweight to fight the monster, you know? Um, you know, I, I, so, you know, he does have, you know, he's got a, the win against Francis Nugano. 
Like you said, I agree. He was embarrassing. He's got wins against Derek Chisora. He's got wins against Otto Wallen, who gave him trouble. And really, that's no, you know, feat. Um, his first tough fight was back in 2012 against Kevin Johnson, who went to diff- distance with him. And he was dropped in the second round of the uh, Cunningham fight in 2013. Um, you know, I, I, he, he has gotten better uh, fighting bigger guys. Uh, when he first came out, he, he had a tendency to throw his jab on a downward motion because he was fighting a lot smaller guys. And he has seemingly picked up power. I always thought that Tyson Fury didn't possess the power that a six foot nine man should. Um, but, you know, Sugar Hell seemingly has, has uh, brought that out of him. Uh, it's been evident in the last several fights. Um, but uh, now when you look at, uh, when you look at Usyk, uh, Usyk's 21 and 0, 14 knockouts. The computer ranks at number one. He holds the IBF, the IBO, the WBA, and WBO uh, uh, world titles. He was a former undisputed and unified uh, cruiserweight champion, cleaned out that division uh, with wins over Marco Huck, Marius Bredis, Mira Gassiev, uh, Christoph uh, Glowacki, uh, to name a few. They were the big names uh, at that time. Uh, he's 37, two years older. Uh, six foot three, six inches shorter, 78 inch reach, uh, uh, which is seven inches shorter, 53 rounds less. He's got 177 rounds. Um, but he's a smart fighter. I, I, I think, you know, when you look at the styles, Tyson Fury, like you said, he uses that size. He's a bully in the ring. He leans on you. He gives you some of this and some of that. A couple of elbows, a couple of backhands. He, he knows all the tricks. He knows how to push your head down and lean on you. He knows how to maybe hit you on a break when the ref's on the other side. You know, he knows all the tricks. He's a slick guy. Um, But those tricks that he uses has a tendency to frustrate his opponents, and he gets to them mentally. But he's going to be stepping in the ring with probably one of the strongest mentally strong men in the sport of boxing that I've ever seen. This guy wins fights just by that look he gives people. He's, he's kind of scary. You know, we were talking about the, the Anthony Joshua fight. Well, Anthony Joshua fell into that game twice. I, I personally think that um, Joshua won the second fight. I think it was close enough where I thought he landed the, the harder shots. And when you look at uh, Usyk's best wins of his career, as far as my opinion, are the two wins against uh, Anthony Joshua and his stoppage over Daniel Dubois in his last fight. Uh, every other major win um, what, a big, against big names was in the cruiserweight division. Um, before I say how I think this fight's going to go, I'm going to toss it back to you. Um, so we, we got a little idea of the makeup of these two guys. How do you see this fight going, and who's going to win and how? Um, I think, I I really hope it's not a dull, mugging, mauling, pulling, tugging, uh, you know, wrestling match kind of fight. Although I do see definitely some of, a lot of that from Tyson Fury early on. Um, The question will be is, can he sustain it? Um, because I think, and like you said, Sugar Hill has brought out the real power punching in him. However, one of the things that I thought was so effective against Deontay Wilder may not be effective against Oleksandr Usyk just because of the dimensions of the two guys. And that was that sort of croc gym, sort of almost like a bow and arrow um, you put that snake, that long jab, and then right behind it, yep. you punch through the target like Tommy Hearns did. Um, and, you know, it was a Manuel Stewart thing. Of Lennox Lewis used to do it well. Um, and it was handed down through the Kronk family there uh, from Man- Manny Stewart to Sugar Hill. And you saw it, especially in the rematch, just in the first round. 
of uh, Fury versus Wilder, him nailing Wilder with that. He's going to have a hard time catching Usyk with that because Usyk is going to be closing the distance a lot and going to his body. And I think we haven't seen Fury have to deal with a guy going after his guts. Um, And I think the other thing, and this was one of the things that made Mike Tyson so effective, is heavyweights are not used to fighting smaller guys. The punches are coming from an angle that's hard to see. And especially when you have a speedy, skilled smaller guy, those things work. Those are not disadvantages for Usyk. Those are advantages. Um, the disadvantage is that he's smaller. So every time he com- comes in, Fury can grab him around the neck and press down. Yep. yep. And that's going to sap his strength. It's gonna, it, it might sap Fury a little, but to a lesser degree, because Usyk's not going to just stand there and take that. Um, he might, because if he the more he goes relaxes, the more it's all fury doing the work, and then Yusuf maybe gets pushed down to the canvas and then just stands up. They do it again. If, if he keeps doing it, the referee might help him out because the referee will might say, you know, cut the crap. Um, so, but that's going to be dull to watch that mess um, for a while. The thing is, if every time Usyk gets in that position, as that's happening, go right inside with an uppercut to the guts. Um, you know that Fury's going to have his um, trunks pulled way up to his nipples. So that's going to be an issue, I'm sure, was where the belt line is. Uh, I see Usyk taking a decision. Hard fought, sloppy at times. But, and maybe it's going to be closer. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's, if it's a split decision just because some people might be, you know, one of the judges might be liking the Fury style. But I, I see Usyk winning by decision. Well, he, uh, I just, I can't go against all that skill. Um, well, I you know... You make some interesting points. And first of all, I I said earlier, you know, Tyson Fury was extremely proficient fighting smaller guys. That's all that he fought in the beginning of of his career. As a matter of fact, he he perfected his jab uh, downward. And as he moved up in the division, he started fighting the bigger heavyweights, obviously, you know. and, And he actually had to go back to the drawing board and learn how to throw... Uh, a straight jab, which he's done. And his last, you know, bunch of fights have been against bigger guys. It's going to be interesting to see if he can revert back to uh, that comfort zone fighting a smaller guy. I mean, six inches, I mean, he was fighting guys a foot smaller than him. You know, uh, you know, Usyk six inches. Usyk is used to fighting bigger guys. He demonstrated that uh, pretty uh, effortlessly against AJ. Uh, Anthony Joshua's style... I believe, was too technical to beat Usyk. I think, and I know that sounds crazy, but that's what Usyk does best. He out technically, techniques you, you know, uh, if that's a word. But uh, Tyson Fury, he frustrates opponents, gets them out of their game. But you need to not be mentally sound in order to fall prey to that. And Usyk is mentally sound. He knows. He's watched tape. He knows what Tyson Fury's going to do. We're, we're, he's not going to watch this show and, and a light bulb's going to go off his head and say, you know, they're right. I, you know, I got I to gotta, I gotta think about that. You know, he's already been there, done that. Um, the other thing about Usyk is, and, and I think that, you know, everybody always talks about Tyson Fury and how, you know, much of a technically sound boxer. He's, this, you know, can box, he this and that. But he really doesn't. He doesn't have good footwork. He doesn't have good footwork. He really doesn't. He's kind of flat-footed. He moves around, but he doesn't move around that much. Um, Usyk does. And not only does he have movement and and he's technically sound, he's got a brain. 
Deontay Wilder, you know, we, we all compare Deontay Wilder's fight with Fury because Fury looked the best against him. Well, you know, uh, Deontay Wilder was a one-trick pony. He's got power, no footwork, you know, no jab, no movement, no brain. You know, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. He's not even, uh, he's not even close to being a, a guy that has a brain, in my opinion, all right? Um, uh, Usyk does. You know, I, I stopped and, and thought for a minute uh, about Tyson Fury, and I said, when was the last time he really fought a guy that was mentally strong and intelligent? I can't find another guy on his resume that'll match Usyk in terms of mental strength and, uh, you know, brain and, and intelligence. Um, I, I also could see exactly what you said, Tyson leaning on him and all that. But if he does it too much, you know, he could risk getting points deducted for that, you know? Um, and I think Usyk knows that. I don't think Usyk is going to let him lean on him because, like you said, and I agree 100%, that'll sap the energy out of him. But I think we're going to see more of a Usyk on his toes. You know, he felt the power of Anthony Joshua. He was stunned a couple of times. Um, I think he's going to respect Tyson Fury's power, and he's going to assume it's like Anthony Joshua's. Whether it is or whether it isn't, I don't know. Uh, I never got hit by either one of these guys. Uh, but I think Usyk is going to be ready for it. You know, remember, he said he has a plan, a good plan. He's got a plan, and I believe it. I believe that this guy uh, does. You know, you talk about size difference, right? The fights, the two fights that stick out in my mind about seeing a bigger guy fall at the hands of a smaller guy. Well, well, first, you got to give credit to Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. Even though Evander was taller, um, you know, he still was a guy. Well, when he fought Tyson, he was a full-fledged heavyweight. But, um, you know, but the guy that really sticks out is Michael Spinks. When, when Michael Spinks fought Larry Holmes, it looked like it's going to look Saturday night. Maybe not the height difference, but the size, the bulk. And I watched Michael Spinks um, get in there and, and hit and get out of harm's way. Get in there and hit and get out of harm's way. And, and he stole those fights from Larry Holmes. Maybe that's what Usyk has to do. Maybe that's what Usyk has to do. You know, yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah. You know, he's got to get in there. Um, you know, he does seem to have a good chin. Has I don't know this this answer, but has Usyk ever been down? I don't think he has. Um, not that I can think. Uh, well, I mean, I think some people would say yeah, would, they would call the the last fight the Dubois fight you know a knockdown even though it was a low blow I, I think the way that went down if that if that referee ruled that a knockdown I think he would have gotten up I well they they should have the kind of guy Usyk is they missed an they missed a knockdown in the Lomachenko fight and and even when they watched the replay nobody said it the referee called it a slip Cambosos was was down he was dropped and he, he stands him up. He, he's looking at him like he was ready to take an eight count. They said, go ahead. He's like, you know. Uh, Jesus yeah. says, Fu hey, hey, I just want to make a comment. A uh, guy in the chat room, Jesus says um, that Fury and Usyk have good footwork. I, I don't think Fury does. Do you? I, I think I think he, he for a big man, he, he moves well. For I a big man. But for a big, I think, I think the advantage in this fight uh, has to go to Usyk because I think it's very hard not to watch, look at those Wilder victories now through the prism of what Wilder has become. And maybe that's unfair, but remember, he was incredibly elusive. Who, who was elusive? Fury. Oh, very yeah. Fury, elusive. Fury, very well, elusive. Fury, Fury, I was going to say, not Wilder. Wilder, no, Wilder, no. Wilder had one thing, a punch, uh, and that's yeah, all he and still I, has, and, and he and still has no that, brain. But that's what's interesting about Fury is he's extremely good defensively and, and, and can be hard to hit for a monstrous dude. It's true. That's impressive. But I never see However, him on his toes. I, I never see him on his toes, though. Yeah. I mean, I think a little bit in, in the first Wilder fight, but I think that was the, the big change is Sugar Hill said, look, you can whack this guy out. Fight this guy big. Fight this guy big and strong, bring it right to him, and you'll take him out. 
Um, and I think that's what we saw in the next two fights. I think Whereas that's what they're going to... The first one where he a lot, a lot of movement. Uh, he has, you know, I, this is going to be a tough fight to call because I can see him fighting Usyk like a big, strong guy, manhandling him. Um, and and I, I, I think the Larry Holmes, Michael Spinks comparison is a good one because I do think that that's... That's the way Usyk has to box him is in and out a sort of knuckleball kind of fight where he gives him weird movement. And because remember, he's also a, he's a southpaw, so I can't remember was Steve is Steve Cunningham a southpaw? He might be, huh? Listen, I, um, I've... so because it's been a while since Fury has faced a southpaw, and I think a, so. You give him, you come in, you land a combination, you move out. You come in again, land a combination, maybe move out in another direction. That kind of a sort of knuckleball fight, Usyk keeps up a strategy like that. It's going to be tough for Fury that, without resorting to grappling. He's going to. He's definitely going to grab him, and yeah. and and I think that if if you know Usyk can incorporate a pivot similar to Lomachenko. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be like that, but they are good friends. That that's that's going to help him. And here's the th other thing: Tyson Fury is going to have to. I, I I would think that Tyson Fury is is planning on going for a knockout in this fight because I think, I think you're right. Well, I, I, I can't knockout. see them saying, "Listen, outbox him," because I mean, you're 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 trying yeah. to outbox a, a a a talented boxer. Yeah. All right. My prediction for this fight is: I think. And I've been going back and forth, back and forth. Now, I'm a big Tyson Fury fan. I like Tyson Fury. I, I think he's quite the character, and I, and I think that boxing needs characters. I don't think they need assholes. We got plenty of them in this sport. Uh, but characters are, 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 are a different story, all right? This fight does not... Uh, styles make fights. And you know I'm high on Anthony Joshua. And, you know, I still believe Anthony Joshua can beat... Um, Tyson Fury and I think if the same Anthony Joshua got in the ring against Usyk a third time I, I, I think he, he beats Usyk but with all that said I'm picking Usyk I'm picking Usyk like you and I'll tell you I think it's going to be he's going to win by decision um, I think he's going to frustrate Tyson Fury to the point where Tyson Fury is going to fight a little more more dirty than he usually does and I think he's going to lose a couple of points from it, um, at least one, you know. And, and I think at the end of the day, um, you know, Tyson Fury's strength is to bully and muscle this guy around. And I don't think that Usyk is going to give him the chance. I really don't. I use the Michael Spinks, Larry Holmes uh, uh, comparison because obviously Larry Holmes uh, known as one of the better heavyweight boxers in, in the history of the sport. And Michael Spinks was able to to get in there right in his wheelhouse. If you remember, I, could, I, can, re I can remember those punches as clear as day. He was like right in between Larry Holmes' his, 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 uh, hands and was able to bam, bam. And he was hitting weird. He was like, he was throwing punches from crazy angles. Even They might not have even hurt Larry Holmes at all, but they were surely scoring. Uh, on the judges' subjective scorecards. Um, and uh, I believe um, that um, I believe that Usyk's going to steal this fight. I, I really do. Now, the rematch, maybe it'll be a different story. Maybe not. But, uh, but I'm picking Usyk, man. I think Usyk's going to win this fight. Uh, and I think uh, he's uh, uh, going to win it uh, uh, kind of convincingly. I think the first couple of rounds are going to all be Tyson Fury. And then I think Usyk's going to just take over this fight. I don't see Tyson Fury knocking him out. And if he does, uh, that's what he needs to do, I think, Alex. I think if he wants to win this fight, he's got to knock him out. And I don't think this guy's going to let him. I don't, think, I don't think Tyson Fury punches harder than Anthony Joshua. And Anthony Joshua landed some hellacious shots on Usyk and didn't, didn't drop him or stop him. Yeah, I think this is going to be interesting because... I think timing and speed, I mean, timing can be m more beneficial than speed. And I think when it comes to timing, you got to go for Usyk. Uh, I think when it comes to speed, you got to go for Usyk. When it comes to power, 
I think Tyson Fury has that great big right straight right hand. So that's where his power is. But I think the body shots, I think you, I don't know. It's hard because Usyk, you know, even if it's like what, two shots from Usyk or three shots from Usyk equals one from Fury. I think Usyk is the kind of guy who can land them. Uh, he can get in and get out. Um, I, I don't know. I, I I agree with you. I think it's going to be a Usyk by decision. It'll probably end up being split, even though it, you know, just because that's the world we live in. Um, and I think that it'll probably be convincing for Usyk, but, you know, you'll have one ju- outlier judge who sees it for Fury. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's split. But, um, yeah, I, I like Usyk in it. Um, I... I it, I don't I just hope it's a good fight because remember Tyson Fury when he beat Vlad Klitschko that was the biggest upset that you'd never ever want to watch again um because that fight was dreadful but I think to his credit Fury's gotten a lot better since then and that and that's been pretty cool is that we've actually seen this guy get better right in front of our eyes which is neat and maybe Maybe uh, next week I'll be saying, boy, he impressed the hell out of me again. Well, I think the the one big change I saw in Tyson Fury was he he, he started knocking people out again. You know, good fighters. Um, but it's going to be and interesting. Sugar Hill. You know, uh, yeah, I agree. Because remember, that's that Manny Stewart loved knockouts. And I think Sugar Hill, you know, he's, you know, he's in that same family. So he... They like knockouts, too. You know, we got Navin here saying, you know, uh, about body shots and everything else. And, and I agree, except I have a feeling that um, Usyk would be able to be more successful hitting the body of Fury than Fury being able to hit the body of Usyk. And one of the reasons I say that, uh, the obvious, because of Usyk's uh, movement uh both feet uh, body head i mean he's got great movement um but there's where the six inch height advantage will hurt tyson fury because he'll have to bend way down yeah you know and then he's and in order to land that shot you know u6 a smart counter puncher he's he's, tyson fury would be leaving himself open to get points against him you know so yeah uh, i mean fury's weapons are going to be the straight uh, one, two, and uppercuts. Um, yeah, the and, one, two. You're right. The, that one, two. That that line him up, shut him up. Uh, you know, yeah, one, two. That's that is his answer of of beating Usyk. But Usyk isn't going to let it happen. That's no. that's why. You know, I mean, I agree that that's how it could happen, and and that's the way. You know, it should happen. I, I just. I'm giving you sick. I never really was a huge, you know, here's the thing. I've always been a big fan of Tyson Fury. Um, never been a big fan of Usyk, you know, but, yeah. I, you know, it is what it is, you know. And, cool and if he ma- this makes you a fan of his. Well, I, I'm not going to go and be a <laughs> fan boy. I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I'm I trying your name to Alexander. Hey, listen, listen, all I'm all I'm going to say is I gave I, I, I went out on a limb and picked uh, Mungia over over Canelo, and I was roasted over it, you know. And I was I was wrong. I you know I just hope I'm right this time. I don't want people to say, "Hey, I tell you what, when Billy C gives you a prediction, go the opposite way." You know what I mean? I tell you one thing that I remember, and I think you'll appreciate this because remember when when Bernard Hopkins almost cut off the circulation in your bicep there? It was because I, I had mentioned to him that I remember before he fought Tito him or at the end of that fight he told larry merchant that you know this was a fight where i was fighting a guy who had a gun a gun with that left hook tito has that left hook it's like fighting a guy with a gun if you're fighting a guy with a gun you've got to get to that gun in this case the guy with the gun is tyson fury and it's the big straight right hand so Usyk has had to have think what do i do about that gun and so he's going to be thinking, I don't want to get hit by that gun. So you're right that he will nullify that straight, you know, cronk one, two. And whether he gives it a little head movement every time he slips in, he's not going to want to get hit by that gun. And, and who times fighters better than Usyk at this size? You know, so if Tyson Fury starts doing that, you know, in between that line him up, shoot him up, it, 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 
uh, Usyk's going to be counterpunching, you know? I mean, uh, um, you know, I, I got uh, a latecomer in the chat room. Jordan says, can't see a scenario that Fury wouldn't be able to handle. I can see a scenario where uh, Usyk would struggle. I, I don't know. I don't know about... I, 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 th I think... That makes this delicious. No, I know. I, I, look, I, I just... I think brains are going to come into this uh, fight big time. I think the intelligence level of Usyk is the difference. I know that Tyson Fury's got the size advantage and all of that, but I, I'm telling you, the, 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 the mental strength of Usyk, plus, plus, he's preparing that he's got... He's doing this for Ukraine, you know? So and that's a whole nother... That's a whole nother dimension that you, you can't just get yourself up for unless, you know, uh, you're going through that, you know? And remember, so. he's a guy who, just the way he trains, he is comfortable being uncomfortable. That is a huge asset for a fighter. Uh, it's like, you know, he, he's, he can stay underwater for four minutes. I mean, sure, we've seen Fury with blood pouring down against Otto Valin there, but we've never seen him you know, where he's losing round after round. Uh, because he doesn't. Right. So this, this what happens if Usyk starts giving him a hard time? Um, whereas if Fury, if Fury takes the first few rounds, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised. Usyk is, is going to be prepared for that because he's comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, no. Hey, you know, it's funny you mentioned that uh, interview we did with uh, B-Hop in Vegas. I recently just watched it again, and uh, fun. I didn't realize how much fun we were having, you know, because it, it's it's been a, a few. I posted it. I put it back up online uh, uh, and, you know, was recommending that people watch it because that was um, a B-hop that I never saw before, you know, that, that interview. And uh, I'm not just saying it because I did it, but well, I've seen many interviews with B-hop, and I, I actually thought that was one of the best – uh, interviews of B-Hop from to get to know B-Hop. It wasn't, you know, it was like we were we were talking about all we were we were talking about him getting into the Hall of Fame, if you remember. And he's like, well, I'm glad they changed it three years, and I get to go in. He says, I don't yeah. care what they do after that, you know. But uh, uh, yeah, and, I I would love to talk to him again to see what he because it's very interesting to see him at these weigh-ins and pushing uh, like he pushed pushed the. Devin Haney's father's buttons badly. Um, I heard Devin Haney's and, father's really got on the commission bad too. Oh uh, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I wonder how much it does seem like B hop is having fun out there. I'd be curious just to hear about, you know, what's, what's he enjoying most about this new role as just promoter, you know, not having to uh, get hit. Yeah. Have the skin in the game, but he still looks Stir the pot all over. I tell you what, though, he still looks like he could get in the ring and do some. Oh my damage. God, it's ridiculous I how know. fit he looks. I know, He's incredibly it's, lean. It's scary. Yeah. All right, man. Well, listen, Alex, I appreciate uh, your thoughts. You know, I'm going to be white. That's on early, right? It's like another. Yeah, that's the other best things about it. I know. It starts at ten in the morning and it'll be over by six at night. I love it. I love it. Maybe <laughs> maybe we'll do a post fight. It depends how much scotch oh, I drink. I'm, I'm down for that. No, it depends how much scotch I drink. <laughs> I, I've I've done some post fights a little when when I probably shouldn't have, you know. But uh, but anyway, Alex, have a good one, brother. All right, Billy. See, thanks so much. Peace. That's my man, Alex Papali. And uh, giving us our, his thoughts. Hey, listen, before I go, I just want to remind you, uh, you know, reach out and uh, join us. Join me for the New York State uh, Boxing Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm going in this year uh, as a 2024 inductee. I'm real proud and excited. Uh, it's going to be taking place September 15th. Uh, at Russo's on the Bay in Howard Beach. Get yourself a ticket. Come join me. Let's rock the place. Let's make it a Billy C event. Uh, just reach out to uh, uh, Jack Hirsch, 516-790-7592 is uh, a number for all the information on tickets and all kinds of other stuff. Or drop me an email, A-J-H-I-R-S-C-H and the number 5 at AOL.com. Uh, I'd love to see you there. It's uh, September 15th. It's one of the best uh, restaurants uh, you'll ever eat at. Uh, and it's a, a great uh, deal. Open bar from uh, 12 for the whole time, actually, 1230 to 530. So uh, uh, it's great. And uh, food is great. Seven course meal they'll be serving there. 
and uh, you get to bust my balls, huh? Because we'll hang out. But hey, listen, enjoy the big fight this weekend. It's going to be a good one. You heard my prediction. I'm thinking uh, Michael Spinks, Larry Holmes, and I'm picking Usyk uh, in a fight to beat my guy. Tyson Fury is my guy, you know. So uh, uh, that's my pick. Enjoy the fight. We may be doing a post fight. Depends how much scotch I drink. Eh, if I drink too much, we won't be doing a post fight. If I don't, we'll be right here as soon as the fight's over. But until then, either way, make sure you tune in next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Until then, ciao, baby.